Hey guys, Kayla Iacovino here from trackmovie.com. Today I'm going to be doing a very special demo for you um, right out of the new book from Hero Collector called Star Trek Cocktails, A Stellar Compendium. There have been a few Star Trek cocktail books over the years. Um, this is a really excellent one. It's uh, pretty extensive, has multiple sections for different styles of drinks. And the drinks sort of range from pretty simple, you know, a twist or not even a twist on a classic cocktail to something that they've invented specially for the Star Trek universe of cocktails. All right, let's start with Tapal's Vulcan Grasshopper. This is just your basic grasshopper, but I was really excited to have this in the book because I like this drink and I wanted to know how to make a grasshopper. Um, this is a drink that we're going to need three ingredients for. It's pretty simple. We're going to need uh, creme de menthe. Creme de menthe is usually green, but I have clear creme de menthe. You can add green food coloring if you want the drink to be green. You want creme de cacao, and you want the clear version of creme de cacao. And you also want single cream. It's really hard to find a single cream, so half and half works just as well. Um, and this is a real simple one. We're going to be mixing one part of each of these together. Um, and for one drink, we use two tablespoons of each of these ingredients. The, so this is basically like a mint chocolate drink. Some people say it tastes like an Andes mint. Um, like I said, I think this is just the normal grasshopper recipe. I don't know that there's anything particularly Vulcan about it. One cool thing is if you do get this white creme de mint, um, you can then mix in whatever color you want. So you can make a blue one or a purple one, whatever your heart desires. Then the cream, or I'm using half and half. And just two tablespoons of that. This is a really good after dinner drink. Um, it's not super boozy because neither of these liqueurs are terribly strong, um, but the flavor is very strong. So if you're not a mint lover, you might not like this drink. All right, so we filled our shaker half filled with ice. Um, and you want this to only be half full so that you can be sure to get a nice froth on that cream. We're gonna pour this whole thing into our shaker half filled with ice and shake. And now one of the tricks to shaking is you wanna shake it a lot. And you can see that even fogging up a little bit. For the grasshopper, you can serve that in a martini glass. I like to use a coupe glass. Um, this one I particularly like because it's green tinted and the, the drink is gonna come out white. So it just gives it a little hint of green. All right, and there you have it. The next drink we're gonna be making is called an Ice Planet, and this one is fun frozen blue drink. For this, we're gonna need blue curacao. This gives us our blue flavor. It's an orange liqueur. Um, lime juice, which we're gonna um, get from fresh limes. Um, some white rum. Here I have some Captain Morgan. And gum syrup is what the recipe calls for. We only have simple syrup. It's basically the same stuff. So just simple sugar syrup is fine. And we're gonna top it off with some lemonade. Okay, so we're gonna make one drink and we're gonna start by squeezing some limes to get us four tablespoons of lime juice. I always like to, when a recipe calls for lime juice or lemon juice, squeeze these from the fruit. It, just makes the drink taste a lot fresher, but if you don't have limes and you wanted to use pre-squeezed juice, that's fine too. Don't use limeade though, that has sugar in it. Um, I'm gonna use this lemon or lime squeezer that has an insert for smaller things like limes. So you use the lime side for limes. And again, however you wanna squeeze your juice is perfectly fine. When you're squeezing these, um, you don't need to really squeeze super hard. The harder you squeeze, especially at the end here, um, you're gonna just end up squeezing that rind, which is a bitter part of the fruit, and you don't want that bitter flavor in your drink. Uh, just, it feels a little bit wasteful, but the drink won't taste good if you squeeze the heck out of it. I'm just gonna pour this into my shot glass. 
and then measure everything out back out into my mixing glass. And a one teaspoon measure. We're gonna do four of these. This drink is really nice and not super boozy, a lot like our last drink. Um, it's citrusy and light, and it's frozen. We're gonna be blending it. Um, so it's gonna be a really nice refresher summer drink. All right, the next thing we need is our white rum. We're gonna do one and one fourth ounces. Close enough. Now we're gonna do four teaspoons of our blue curacao. This is gonna give us that deep blue color um, and a little bit of orange flavor. All right, that is our blue. It's getting real pretty now. Um, now we're going to add one tablespoon of our sugar syrup. Give ourselves a little sweetness to balance out all that acid. And we will be adding lemonade, but we're not going to be doing that until the very end. All right, so next we're going to blend it. I'm just going to add a few ice cubes here. Maybe one more. So that's like six ice cubes. Um, you can play around with this. Again, I would only caution you not to use too much ice. It's gonna be, it's not gonna be like a slushy. It's gonna be a little bit watery. So don't worry about um, adding out enough ice. Definitely don't add too much. And really all we're doing here is mixing and, and breaking up that ice. So that's the whole purpose of this. All right, so now we're gonna pour it into our glass of choice. Um, I would use like a, a, a short cocktail glass. I have these glasses that I absolutely love. Um, it's a diamond shaped uh, whiskey glass and it just gives you that really cool otherworldly futuristic look. And then we're gonna finish this off with some lemonade at the top of the drink, four teaspoons of the lemonade. So if I were a better bartender, I could probably give that to have a nice layered look, but what's cool is that it sort of ends up being a layered look at the end anyway, um, because the ice Raise, rises to the top here. And so maybe the lemonade is hanging out in this layer, I'm not sure. But we get a dark blue color at the bottom and this frothy sort of upper layer at the top. Let's give that a try. Mm, it's so refreshing. Um, you've got a little bit of bitterness in there that comes from the citrus, but it's really citrus forward. Um, bright, fun, summertime drink for sure. The third and final drink we're gonna to make today is Jean-Luc Picard's Twist on the Martini. This is an Earl Grey Martini. Um, what you're gonna to need to make this is cold Earl Grey tea, which I have prepared here. I'm just using some of my favorite Bigelow tea. Um, we also need gin. You can use your gin of choice. I'm using Aviation. Uh, I think Aviation is really good for this drink because it is not super juniper -y. it's very, very smooth, and not super citrusy either. It's a really balanced gin, I really recommend it. Um, we're also gonna need lemons, so I have fresh lemons to make lemon juice, um, and sugar syrup, which I have here. And this calls for uh, one ounce of lemon juice, which we can get probably from just half of this lemon. But let's just juice this whole thing. Again, I'm gonna use my lemon juicer tool here. These are awesome, I really recommend everyone own one of these. And again, if you wanna use, you know, pre-squeezed lemon juice, that's totally fine. Um, I prefer using the fresh lemons. Like I said, I think it's, um, it makes a big difference in terms of that flavor. And again, just like the limes, you really do not want to squeeze these lemons too hard, or you will just get that, the flavor of the bitter rind in there. We do not want that. Just want the juice. Ooh. 
squeeze just enough to get all your juice out. So I'm gonna use my measured shot glass. Okay, so here is our one ounce. Let's see if we have another ounce in there. We do. So let's go ahead and make two of these. They are delicious and they are quite boozy. So just beware of that. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is add in our gin. Uh, we've got this giant bottle of aviation. We're doing two ounces per drink, so that's gonna be four ounces. So a typical shot is one and a half ounces, so each of these drinks has two ounces of gin, so that makes it a little bit stronger than you might be used to. Okay, so now each drink calls for one and one quarter ounce of the Earl Grey tea. This is my pre-made cold tea. So that's gonna be two and a half ounces for two drinks. So let's do... One and a half. And two. And then finally, we're gonna do a half an ounce per drink of sugar syrup. So I'm gonna do one full ounce. Just gives it a little sweetness. And this is where your shaking skills are really gonna come in handy. So you wanna get your shaker completely filled up with ice, not like the last time where we had it only half filled. And yes, this liquid will fit in there even. Fill, this is ice all the way to the top. And now really, you wanna shake this thing like you mean it. Um, gotta get it really ice cold. And also, you wanna start out with the ingredients at the temperature that they're written for in the recipe. So the only thing that's cold here is the tea, and I think that just means not hot. When your ingredients are room temperature and you mix them in with the ice uh, during the mixing stage, you're intentionally melting some of that ice. You want some of that water to get mixed in with your drink because that's the final profile, flavor profile that you're aiming for. Now this is getting too cold to hold in my hands. So at this point, I know I'm getting close. I'll always grab um, a towel and just give it a little bit more. All right, and then you kinda, you know it's good when you've gotta peel that towel off of the frozen shaker. And we are done. We should have enough for two drinks. Now the recipe book says you could serve this in a martini glass. That would certainly work. I had these um, funky looking wine glasses that I think are even better. And if you're feeling fancy, you can garnish it with some of that lemon you use to squeeze the lemon juice. It's surprisingly delicious. It's smooth, you owe part of that to the aviation gin. Um, the juice gives it a really nice kick. I love lemon and gin drinks already, but the addition of the tea is shockingly, it makes the drink. It really adds this subtle, but important flavor. It would be a totally different drink without it. So this, I was not expecting to be a good drink. 100% this is a win. Um, it might be my favorite drink from the book that I've tried so far. But remember, they are quite boozy, so drink with caution.